Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here for Kayak Fishing Tales. Uh, over on our Facebook page, the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Sammons Facebook page, we have started doing a weekly live broadcast, bringing in people from the industry and talking about products and about the sport of kayak fishing. Um, these live broadcasts, we are now taking and bringing over here to Kayak Fishing Tales on YouTube, so maybe some of our followers who aren't on Facebook can uh, get some of the great information we're trying to put out there for you. So on this week's show, we've got Amanda from Ocean Guardian, powered by Shark Shield, on our show, and she's gonna tell us all some really good information about Shark Shields and how well that product works. Stick around, enjoy the video. Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here. Welcome to this week's Kayak Fishing Show Live. Brought to you as always by Ballast Point Brewing Company. Um, close my office door there. Um, we have got a, a really cool show going on here today. Um, we're going to be talking to Amanda from, uh, from Shark Shield. Um, Ocean Guardian, powered by Shark Shield. Uh, they had a na little name change there. Um, actually, we show that. So we're going to be talking to Amanda. Um, I don't know if you guys are like me. You don't like this happening to your catch. Uh, this was in New Zealand, and I actually can show that. I'm going to show a little video. Um, of what happened to me. If you haven't seen this, this video has actually been viewed over a million times. So um, where I get a, a fish removed from my hand by a bronze whaler in New Zealand. So I don't particularly have a fear of sharks, um, but I certainly um, don't like losing fish. You see, I, I tend to hang my feet over the sides of my kayak and you know that can be dangerous so in other areas like northern california guys have certainly have bigger issues with sharks with much bigger sharks than i've ever had to run into and so several years ago i started using the shark shield um again here's another one we uh you don't want uh, having this one happen to you although here there we go. Uh, this was in Louisiana. And again, this was all stuff before we were using the shark shield. Now, since that point, I have used the shark shield. I've seen the shark shield work. I've seen it drive away fish. It's, it's an amazing product. Um, so with no further, further ado, Amanda Richardson Wilson is going to join us here. And she's going to go over the shark shield and how it works and the whole uh, whole deal behind it. Amanda, welcome to the Kai Fishing Show Live. I really appreciate you uh, being a part of our show for the last few years and uh, and joining us here today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, you've you've been with Shark Shield quite a while. Um, going on six years. We um, Lindsay and I bought the company almost six years ago. Yeah. Yep. And what was the motive behind that? Was this just something you've came across and you just believed in it? Um, we did. Yeah. We looked at all the research. I mean, I'm a diver. Lindsay's a surfer. Um, and we came across it and we just thought it had really been under marketed and there was a much bigger potential for the product. I mean, most of the sales were in Australia then. Um, I've moved back to the U.S. to grow the distribution here. Right. And it's it's. Um, not just a product for, I mean, it started out more for divers, right? Yep. That was the original product was the, um, well, it was actually originated in South Africa. Um, so the Natal Sharks Board, they had an incident of fatal attacks by great whites. And so they were looking at how can they protect people that are not on the beach? So divers and surfers. Um, and so they started looking at different shark senses um, and they came across the ampullae of Lorenzini, which is those gel-filled electrical receptors in the shark's snout. And so they figured out that they could produce a waveform that would affect that shark reception and deter it. So um, they came out with the first product called a shark pod. It weighed 20 pounds. Wow. Um, 
<laughs> battery technology back in the late 1990s was not fantastic. Um, so yeah, so there was a, a piece that mounted on the tank and then another one on the edge of your fin. Um, and so they tried to commercialize that and you know, they're a government entity that's designed to monitor beaches, like they're not designing products and distributing it. So that's where Sharp Shield came in. Um, we licensed their technology and then we turned it into a form factor that could be used in a lot more sports. And so that's how we moved from just diving only um, into free diving, swimming, kayak fishing. Um, now we've got a product that's made specifically for surfing. And, um, and now we're working on boat based products and beach barrier based products. And so because of that continued growth, that's how we're really, um, why we've migrated the name to Ocean Guardian because we are becoming more conservation oriented. You know, we're going to be not only protecting people, um, but you can argue we're protecting sharks when we can. Of course, yeah. That. And we can also protect, you know, whales, tortoises, turtles, anything else that gets caught in a net that we can replace. So we're really truly becoming guardians of the ocean. I'm going to see, I'm just flipping here through here. Uh, for whatever reason, once again, the whole uh, comment thing is not working on my screen. I'm not seeing the comments. So I just brought up my, uh, my other screen so I could actually see some comments up there. We got Martin Toomey's up there. What's up, Martin, uh, Andrew. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, you're every week. It seems like, um, Zachariah, um, says great product. Amanda is an awesome presenter. Uh, I guess he went and saw a present presentation oh, yeah. you did up at, uh, central coast kayaks. Okay. Yep. I'm doing another one actually, um, at the beginning of May. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, and that's the whole thing is getting the word out. Um, I, I'm, I mean the kayak thing for us, like I said, I, I've seen it work. Um, I've had, uh, Tiger sharks swim right up to me mm -hmm. and turn around. Cause I don't generally leave mine on. I'm not like a diver where I, in those areas where I'm going to leave it on all the time. Yeah. I tend to use it more of a, I don't want to lose my fish. So when I hook a fish, mm -hmm. then I will turn it on. Yep. So I have it strapped to like the, the side of my kayak and then with the cable already deployed yep. and then just flip it on. And that way I don't have to worry about a, uh, a fish coming up. We had a ton of hammerheads here in San Diego. Um, a little bit ago and uh, over the last couple of years. And for me as a guide, you know, it, it was very unnerving for clients who are new yeah. to being out there and being able to have that shark shield just made them feel so much more comfortable when they could see, I could turn that thing on and, and the shark would swim away. Yep. Yeah, that's super impactful. Absolutely. And that's why we show a lot of video and that's why I go out and do all those presentations because people hear about it. And they don't believe that it could actually work. Um, I, I was the same. I mean, I, I got to admit, yeah. I mean, I was like, yeah, OK, whatever. You know, I when I first heard of it, I mean, I, I was I was a pessimist. I mean, I, I didn't believe it. And and having those videos and we're going to pop one up here in a few minutes and and having, you know, the the firsthand testimonials by people really makes a big difference. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit more about. Um, I'm going to hide our names off of here. Um, exactly how does the shark shield work? Right. So like I mentioned, sharks have something called an ampullae of Lorenzini. So that's one of their many multiple senses, just like you and I have sight, smell, taste, touch. You know, they have all those senses, too. Plus, they have the lateral line for pressure changes and then the ampullae of Lorenzini. And so what that's normally used for um, is for finding prey. So bottom dwelling sharks, um, like a Port Jackson, a carpet shark, they use it to find things underneath the sand that they can't see. Um, and something like an ambush predator, like a great white or a bull shark, um, they actually have protective coatings that go over their eyes when they're in the final stages of attacking their prey so that a seal can't claw out their eyes. So they actually home in on the electricity created by twitching muscle fibers. Um, and so they've got these little gel filled electrical receptors. And then we, our product has two electrodes. Um, so I've got the Freedom 7 here um, in case anybody hasn't seen it, but there's- I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna give you the uh, whole screen so that you can, okay. people can see it a little bit better. Yep, so we've got one electrode at the top and then a second electrode at the bottom of the tail. Um, and then seawater acts as our conductive medium. 
And so what we do is we pulse electricity between those two electrodes and it generates this three-dimensional electric field. And the waveform that we produce, it induces spasms into those electrical receptors. So it causes extreme pain for the shark when they're proximity to the field. It doesn't cause any long-term damage to the shark. It just causes those spasms when they're in the proximity of the field. Now, um, Andrew over here, again, because we're not able to uh, see the comments on screen mm -hmm. as we normally do. Andrew was asking about how close do the sharks get before it'll affect them? Um, so we say a 15 to 20 foot radius. Now, I was talking to a guy the other day who he claimed his buddy's shark shield was keeping it 50 feet away. So there is a lot of variability depending on the salinity, the water temperature, the species of shark and just individual sensitivities of sharks. I mean, you and I probably have very different hearing or, you know, right. different, you know, it's just, there's going to be variability from shark to shark. So in general, well, that, we say 15 to 20 feet. No, that makes sense. Um, yeah. It, it's like I said, I mean, I had them come up. I don't know. I, I, I saw a, uh, a pretty good size tiger shark was circling. I was bringing up a fish and it had started following it up. And probably, and I could see pretty well down through the water. And probably when I had that fish about 20 feet down, the shark turned away. Mm -hmm. And it was on a beeline line for it. Yeah. So, like I said, it was little things like that that really made me a believer in the product. Um, it, it, it's pretty amazing. And like I said, um, the the new stuff with uh, the the surfboards, that's, that's, you got Tom Carroll behind that, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, because we used to have a product for surfboard, but it had that long trailing antenna. And so obviously there's a bit of um, performance impact when you've got this seven foot antenna dragging in the water when you're on a high performance surfboard. You know, you can see why people didn't want to use that. Right. Um, so that's where Lindsay in Australia, he had the idea to make a sticker. And so we partnered with Tom Carroll to figure out exactly how could we do this without impacting surfboard performance. So yeah, that's been um, a great new product to our lineup. You know, I was thinking about that for a kayak, so you wouldn't have it, but I, I guess the issue there would be we'd probably, because we're always dragging our kayaks, probably destroy it, right? Would. I think yeah. it would last about a day. <laughs> so I've actually got a, um, I lost my, put myself back up on screen. I've actually got a little funny story. We were in um, Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and our guide, Omar, who's just a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, we were having a little bit of a language barrier on trying to explain to him how the shark shield worked. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, I just don't get it. It shocks it. Why, why don't I didn't get it and get it. And, and the, so he, the, Shark shield had been in the water and he pulls it out of the water. So it's still very wet. Oh, and he no. turns it on and put his mouth to it. <gasps> <laughs> we we died laughing. What is <laughs> it's it? like, he's like, oh, now I get it. Now it's electrical. <laughs> it was so funny. It was, it was, it was just <laughs> tongue burned after that. <laughs> I have um, I have shocked myself on it a couple of times um, yeah, with it in the I water. I don't think it's that bad. It's oh, no, no, it's not. It's usually yeah. it's like you know because again I tend to put my foot in the water. Yeah. So it'll brush against my leg or something, and it's just like oh whoa that got me. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's more yeah. of, uh, you're startled. Yes. Because you're not expecting it. And I think a lot of people use that to their advantage with their dive buddies. You know, they drag it across the back of their neck and seem to have a lot of fun. I mean, I can sit there and I can wrap my hand right around the antenna and you can literally just see my hand pulsing. But I don't think that it hurts. It's just kind of a strange sensation. I mean, to me, it's just like the TENS machines. Like if you've ever put those little. Oh, tags. right, right. Yeah, it just makes your muscles contract. So Right. But um, that's great. That's a great practical joke. Yeah, we were doing a photo shoot in the Keys a couple of years ago, and um, they were it was all free diving, and even the photographer was a free diver, and so he's taking pictures, and the guys actually kind of wrapped the antenna right around his stomach, and he didn't know what was going on. It was pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, again, uh, Amanda has generously uh, offered to give away a Freedom Seven Shark Shield. After this broadcast, I'll go in and randomly select one. We have use this randomizer, um, but we need some shares. I need I need people sharing this this video. Uh, so please uh, share it out with your friends. If you have people that kayak fish or dive or surf, uh, particularly in the uh, 
sharkier waters. I mean, like I said, even here in La Jolla, when I'm out of my kayak, we do run across them. And, you know, I had a friend who saw a white shark hit a sea lion uh, mm -hmm. right off La Jolla while he was out on his boat, you know, his little wow. tinny. So, I mean, they're there. And yeah. if you do see one cruising around that, it, it certainly gives you that more uh, comfortable feeling, you know, that little bit of comfort. It's about peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's for. I mean, we're not there to scare people. Um, you know, we're there to give people peace of mind. And especially in areas where there have been a lot more shark sightings or shark attacks, it's to allow them to go back in the water and enjoy their sport without that, you know, niggling feeling in the back of the mind that there's a shark. Right. Right. Uh, let me see if there's some other questions. Um, yeah, my wife said she thinks he actually licked it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so funny. I mean, I hate to laugh at somebody's pain, but how do you not? I mean, but that was kind of silly, really, to lick he, it. He, like I said, it was, he's, you know, he speaks more Spanish than it was a total miscommunication. He didn't understand how it worked. <laughs> um. I just saw a question here and then it scrolled past. Uh, Mark, da, 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 cruel bet, awesome. Where did that question go? It's really weird. Ryan Howell, can you see where you're at? Yeah, I, I got Ryan. Ryan's supposed to be joining us here in a little bit. We got Ryan Howell's going to be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, he's got some stories about sharks from up north, and uh, we'll have him on there. So, like I said, normally I can see questions on this monitor. I'm having to look at a different monitor because they're not coming up. So uh, that's why I keep, if people are wondering why I keep looking off to the side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring up um, another video, and probably one of the most common questions that I get and mm -hmm. I will see posted is like, oh, okay, yeah, it works for a shark that's just cruising around. Mm -hmm. But what about when they're in a full attack, when they're in just full blown, you know, we've all seen the videos of breaching white sharks. So yeah. how does this work in that instance? So we have a little bit of video. I'm going to put it up on the screen and get it rolling. And Amanda, I will let you, and I'm going to give this thing the whole screen, but I will let you, Amanda, maybe uh, just, it's a real short video, just a few yeah. seconds here, but let you kind of talk through what's going on here. Sure. So this testing um, was part of the testing that was done in South Africa. So it was a sealed decoy test. And so there's a sealed decoy at the surface. Um, and then they have the shark shield below it. Um, and they did almost 200 toes, half with the shark shield on, half with it off. So that first one you saw in this one is with the shark shield off. So you've got the shark actually breaching and attacking that seal decoy at the surface. Um, the next one you'll see here is with the shark shield on and the water's a little murky in that one, but you could see it turn. There you see another one um, and then so a third one. You can see, yeah. yeah, they're going to attack and it is completely changing its course of direction. I mean, it's a very marked difference in the behavior of the shark. So when you look at those full test results, like I said, there's a, um, there's 189 total toes, half with the shark shield on, half with the shark shield off. They had 16 breaches when the shark shield was off and they had zero breaches when the shark shield was on. So that's amazing. That's, so that's really great white. Well, the data shows that we do. And, you know, anecdotally, um, we've had numerous people over the years tell us that a great white was charging them in the water. They had a shark shield on and it turned away. That's, it, that, that, that's, I mean, that's, that right there is, is proof. And like I said, that, cause that is the probably, and I'm sure you, that with you as well, uh, of course you're around this stuff all the time. That, that is the number one question that I've ever seen yeah, where people doubt that it works. You know, it's always like, oh yeah, but it's never going to work on a, a shark that's in a full attack mode. Yes, we hear that all the time. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I get tagged and, you know, Facebook threads about shark attacks. And then that's the question. I mean, I have people analyzing it like it's a stopping car. Well, a shark can't stop within this many seconds. And I'm like, well, it's not like a breaking scenario. I mean, a shark can turn on a dime, you know, there. <laughs> right, right. So it's not really the same comparison. So. Yeah, that's that, that was 
That was very uh, convincing. I, actually, I think that's a, might be the first time I've seen that particular video. Oh, was really? When I, was when I went looking around today. Okay. Uh, I'd seen some other stuff, but that was the first time I'd ever actually seen that one. That's um, one of our more popular videos. Um, and that's just one of three different tests that's been conducted by independent universities on our products. So first one was in South Africa back in 2002. Um, that particular one that was in 2012, and that was led by Dr. Charlie Huvenier. So it's actually a South Australian funded um, project. And then most recently, they did testing in Western Australia with testing in South Af Africa, because that's the place they can only reliably find great whites. Um, and then they tested other different shark species in Western Australia. Somebody asked if it'll stop gators. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unfortunately, um, they don't have the ampullae of Lorenzini, right? I don't know. You know, we do have people in Australia that swear it works on crocodiles, on saltwater crocodiles. But as far as I can tell, they don't have an ampullae of Lorenzini. I mean, I suppose if you laid the antenna on them, they may not like it and take off. But um, right. <laughs> I've never done any testing. So. Uh, Martin Toomey says, so even works on big sharks, they won't just blow through it since they're moving so quickly. And again, I think that's what that video that's, just proved. Yeah. Yeah. They, and like you said, those things can turn on a dime. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, that's pretty, um, that, that video is telling. I mean, it, it's, I'm glad we, I'm glad I found that and we shared that. Um, I don't know why <laughs> even now my question comments over here aren't scrolling. Um, I'm going to bring in Ryan. Ryan is of uh, one of your ambassadors for Shark Shield up in uh, more northern or central California, right? Central California, yep. And uh, he's got some stories on his experience with some some toothy critters up yeah. there and and why he's a believer in Shark Shield. So Ryan, I'm going to bring you on. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he'll be up there in one second. And let's do it that way. Hey, Ryan, how are you, man? Good, yourself? Good, good. I'm glad you could join us. You know, it's funny as I saw you do a live video this morning. Um, and I'm like, he's on the water. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it wasn't that long. I'm like, he forgot about our no. podcast. <laughs> no, I was just, uh, did a quick little, uh, morning session this morning at the lake. So, yeah, I saw you plugged this broadcast. So that's what we knew that, oh, you did remember. So yeah. <laughs> thanks for, for joining us. Um, you're, uh, you're, as we said, an ambassador for Shark Shield. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I think it all started kind of, uh, like three years ago, I was uh, I was hit by one of those little toothy critters, and uh, <laughs> so uh, after that, it kind of um, Shark Shield reached out to me, showed me their product and what it can do. Obviously, that video you guys just showed uh, kind of uh, tells you exactly what can that thing will do. And they have other videos out there. They shared one with us like a month ago that uh, was like a school of just regular reef sharks, I think it was, but they turned that thing on and those things scattered. So I mean, it definitely <laughs> deters those sharks. So. Okay, so but people aren't going to know, you know, maybe some of our viewers know, but um, can you tell us your your uh, your story, what what happened? So uh, I think it was October 2014. I was uh, We were kayaking off of uh, Vandenberg uh, Air Force Base, and uh, we were, uh, it's, no, it's a known shark uh, spot, Surf Beach is there, and it's, uh, and pretty much every two years there's a shark attack on a surfer there. And we were out there, uh, another kayaker got hit. Um, the shark circled them and then hit them and then uh, throwing them in the water. We came, helped them. Actually, there was a boat down. We called on the radio, VHF radios. They came over, got them. We looked at each other and said, hey, you guys want to keep fishing or go in? And uh, I figured, you know what? What are the chances of this thing still being here? So we uh, we still continued fishing. I'm like, no one's going to get hit twice in the same day. Well, about 30 minutes later, I get pretty much breached on and uh, – thrown at least 10 feet in the air and uh it bit the kayak twice essentially and the guys from shark week came out measured the teeth marks and they're about each tooth was about two inches apart and they're so they're saying it was at least a 20 foot great white that uh breached Holy cow. That day, so yeah so uh definitely uh 
every time I get back on the water, I definitely have it going through my head. But uh, I would say definitely the shark shield uh, helps keep me a little bit calmer, knowing that most likely it's probably not going to happen again. So, so like I mentioned earlier, um, that when I use the shark shield, it's more a matter of not wanting to lose fish. So I turn it on when I hook fish. Are in those areas? Are you just leaving it on all the time? I'm leaving it on too. Yeah, the whole time I'm on the water. Yeah. So I'm not. I mean, I wasn't dragging fish that day. Um, I didn't have. A, I wasn't hooked up. I was moving from spot to spot and got breached on. So. I definitely don't think uh, up here, especially when we have as many whites as we do, um, it's a uh, turn on when you get a fish. Southern California is obviously a lot different than uh, once you get a right, point no, exception. Exactly. Um, we have a lot more whites and stuff like that, especially SoCal's got a lot more of the juveniles and stuff like that, but we get the, the bigger ones. So if you're fishing anywhere, um, I was out two days ago, Wednesday we went out and definitely had it with me, so... Just one of those have, you, have you actually seen it push sharks away, or is it just I, like now? I haven't seen it push sharks away yet. Um, haven't had a, another occurrence where it, I've seen it push it away. Um, but who knows if I've had one check me out and it pushed it away or not. So Well, yeah, and the water's not exactly crystal clear up there all the time. and No, it's not, yeah. Not it's different. Even if they are there. I was lucky that I saw the ones that I know were pushed away because I was in very clear water. Uh, right, yeah. I'm actually going to be heading to uh, the Bahamas here in a few weeks, and I just got a message this morning that they've actually been hooking quite a few tiger sharks. So I'm definitely going to have my uh, my shark shield along on on that trip <laughs> because, yeah. uh, again, it's just, you know, it, well, I mean, for instance, I once, um, years ago, I was out off La Jolla, and it was, I mean, this was years and years ago, and my buddies and I uh, we went out there looking for marlin. It wasn't long after I had caught my first marlin. And so we heard there was some marlin out there. We paddled about eight miles offshore. And as soon as we get out there, blue sharks wow. start hitting our baits. And then they're coming up yeah. and grabbing the pump for my bait tank. Bait tank. And they just wouldn't leave. You know, it wasn't like we were afraid that anything was, but it was, it was unnerving. Having right. these things, you know, swimming under your boat, you paddle away and you look down and they're swimming right under your your uh, kayak. So just the ability to maybe drive them away in that instance, uh, you know, because yeah. they were so unnerving uh, just being in that position. So I said all these reasons above are reasons that I became such a strong believer in it. Um and that video, like I said, that video we just watched before, that makes me even more of a believer uh, to take away everybody's questions. Yeah, like, I mean, I think that video that was just shown, I mean, you have the proof right there that it'll scare that shark out of a full breach. It stops them. I shouldn't say scare. It stops them. It gives them that shock that, it, you know, it definitely doesn't feel good. I mean, you have the guy that put it in his mouth. That's pretty <laughs> – I couldn't have felt good. I'll tell you that Sorry, much. I thought you were looking to read questions. <laughs> oh, I am uh, kind of looking over here, but yeah. Uh, um, uh, I've but, got uh, guys that are up um, Ryan's way, and they actually have two shark shields. So when they go out, like, they'll fish all night. And so go out at, like, 8 at night and come back at 8 in the morning. And so he leaves it on all night long and then has to replace it with a second one when the battery dies. Right, yeah. How long is the battery life? Six hours. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. for some guys, you know, if you're out a long time, um, you know, Habits. 12 hours, you just get two. Uh, and I know <laughs> now they, they charge a lot faster than the, the first ones I had. Yeah. Um, yeah. It used to be like if the battery was totally dead, it was three and a half, four hours to recharge it. And now it's less than two. That's great. That's great. So you could do multiple sessions in a day. I mean, you could fish in the morning, come in for lunch, and then go fish in the evening too. Yep. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. So uh, anything anything on the horizon with Shark Shield? Anything new coming up? Or yep. So we're working on a um, a boat based product. Um, so that'll be a longer range product that you can power off the mains in the boat. Um, Does that so, be something maybe geared towards dive operations or, you know, yeah, but even and stuff? In, yeah, that's one part of it. But we think um, a big market will be families. You know, in parts of Australia, they're afraid to let their kids swim off the back of the boat. Um, and Australia is such a water-driven country um, that we think a lot of people will actually use it so that they feel like their kids can safely swim off the back of their boats. 
That'd right. be interesting off like yeah. uh, Like when I lived in a, in Western Australia, you know, we had five fatal attacks in like a three year period. And there's this huge Island called Rottnest Island, super clear water. Everybody takes their boats out there and everybody used to swim off the back of the boats. Nobody was in the water after that happened. It was just crazy. Yeah. That's well, you know, even, even when you have those sharks that are, harmless you know uh there's still that i think I mean, a lot of people just uh, well, think uh, shark is, we, have, we have tons of leopard sharks here yeah uh, and they cruise the beaches and my friend he was actually in um a kayak with his daughter they're from new jersey and they were paddling over the top of all the leopard sharks and she fell in the water and just freaked out. And yeah. as like I said, these sharks are harmless. Mm-hmm. But just, you know, to give people that comfort, even if you know that, you know, they're nurse sharks or whatever. Um, like I said, I mean, I think that's a big part of it is being more comfortable on the water. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, yeah, I always say it's like when I'm out at night and you talked about the, the, you know, the people who go out all night. Um, I always say that it's like, well, I'm never scared during the day. Because the monsters all come out at night, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see them during the day. You can't see anything at night. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um, it's a little spooky when you're out there and something brushes against your leg or. or well, especially you, because you keep your feet in the water all the time. No, I can't help it. I, I, it's it's something that has been a habit of mine forever, and I and I don't really, you know, it's like, well, you know, my feet are in the water. People comment at all the time. Why oh, you get your foot yeah. bit off? Like my feet are in the water all the time when I'm surfing. What's the big difference if it's, I'm on my kayak? You know, it's like. Well, you're not bringing fish up to your boat. Well, yeah, that's that's the that's the thing right there. And like I said, I, and, and seeing that thing work so well with the hammerheads here, um, yeah. Because then it, that uh, to me that all got blown out of pr- proportion. You know that you see the video of the guy like stabbing at the hammerhead um, from yeah. his kayak because it keeps swimming. He had fish in the water. Oh, you know, at first, let's bad. not invite and want and guests to the to the party. You know, um, yeah, you know, let's not do that. Out. But they do get they do get aggressive, and it's not like I said, it's not like they're going to knock you out of your boat. It's not like they want to attack you, but they get aggressive and they get just like I said, it's kind of sketchy when they're right going back and forth and coming at yeah. you and all that. Well, so. and Right. I mean, there's um, near Jupiter in Florida, there's a, a, an operation, a shark feeding operation. They're hand feeding lemon sharks. So what do you think has happened now? You can't right. even hear fish over there because anybody shoots a fish in the water and they think it's theirs. Oh, right. Right. So it's yeah. You start feeding the sharks. They're going to associate humans with food. So. Right. And. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And free divers. I mean, I, I, I can see where for them it works well. You know, there's so many spear fishermen here uh, that lose um, like their white sea bass will get tagged by a seven gill. Yeah. Um, so protecting your catch, you know, is, is a huge part of it, not just protecting you. No. And I think most of our spear fishers that use it, that's exactly why they're using it. You know, they're not scared of sharks, so they're not going to be in the water. Right. I mean, if you're that scared of sharks, you're just not going to be an ocean going person. Um, they're using it to keep their catch. Right. And, and, you know, like you said, it, it, a lot of this is about conservation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love sharks. I mean, I think they're one of the coolest, coolest animals there are, but you know, they just do what they do. You know, if there's meat in front of their face, they're, they're going to want to, they're going to want to eat it. So um, yeah. let's, let's try to help protect that shark. So it's not in a, in a position where then people are stabbing at it with their spear guns or, mm-hmm. or taking it out on them. Yeah. Or if somebody does get tagged by a shark, then, you know, you, you get these places, then they want to hunt all the sharks. Mm-hmm. Well, know? and there is a lot of pressure on the shark population. I mean, all the shark finning, um, you know, and there used to be a lot of, you know, commercial shark fishing. They still do it in Australia. I mean, if you see fish and chips, a lot of places that's actually shark meat. <laughs> it's funny as all of a sudden the questions have popped up on my oh, 
Yeah, I see that too. It says on the, the left side of the screen, it says 47 comments and 34 reactions. Yeah, yeah. see that yeah. sort of all shown up earlier. So uh, only 27 shares to go and we'll be able to give away a Freedom 7. So remember, we want 100 shares because this is not, it's not an inexpensive item. No, 500 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not cheap, but you know, it's actually funny. It's kind of the same as um, a lot of times people say, well, God, you use a $500 paddle. It's like, well, you know, it's in my hand. <laughs> yeah. You know, or I don't want to spend two hundred and fifty dollars for a for a good VHF radio. I'm going to buy the the ninety dollar one or the fifty dollar one, it, and then the fifty dollar one month. fails. Yeah, and exactly. It, you know, good stuff costs a few bucks, and and for your safety, and for um, keeping your fish. Yeah, for all that, I, I don't think it, it's really that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a few bucks, but I, I certainly, if I was up in Ryan's area, it, it, it's a no brainer. I'd have one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he did yeah. have a pretty sizable price drop um, just last, it was either October or November. It used to be six forty nine, And so we've been able to bring the cost down to four ninety nine. So yeah, Randy here says he worries more. about bull sharks, you know, at night getting yep. his, his fish, you know, and, and, it, it that, that's that's a huge part. Again, it's not just about the the safety issue. It, it's protect your catch. You mm. know, we invest a lot of money to go out there fishing to hopefully be able to bring some food home. I mean, I'm all about catch and release on a lot of fish, but um, the being able to keep that in, in those areas and and like I said, for me, so much of it is that safety factor of when I'm landing the fish. I don't think the shark is wants to attack me. But if it's coming after a fish that I'm reaching down to grab, like in, you know, in that, that video from New Zealand, yeah. you know, uh, it could accidentally just brush against my hand and, you know, mm-hmm. flay my hand open. Mm-hmm. There was another video like that. I think it was in Hawaii. Like he was bringing up a, a fish as well. And I think it was a tiger shark just launched out of the water right behind him. That was probably four or five years ago, maybe. Yeah. That was quite the viral hit. I'm going to have to look that one up. Uh, yeah. Someone see, asked. Uh, someone asked about uh, if it works inside the kayak. But where is or... he? Where's Martin base? Um, I don't remember where Martin is. Martin's like, I want to say he was in Florida, but I... oh, okay. Yeah, I, we I have a lot of people in Florida that use our product. Um, you know, mainly spear fishermen, but the um, the bull sharks are really bad on the, especially on the Gulf Coast. Um, yeah, Ryan, you started to comment on one of the questions and I can't see it at this moment, scrolling down. Uh, somebody, somebody asked about, uh, whether it worked inside the kayak or does it have to be in the water? So the antenna has to be in the water. You can keep the electronics module inside the kayak so that you can turn it on and off. What a lot of people do is they just thread the antenna through the scupper hole and you just need to make sure that both of the electrodes are wet. Um, otherwise, some people put the, the Velcro pouch um, on a handle on the, you know, the outside handle and just throw it over the edge that way. But I would not put the whole thing like the electronics module in the water just because of the drag factor that it would create for you. Yeah, I use um, depends on the kayak I'm in. So people need to be aware of that. If you have a very thick kayak and you're going through a scupper hole, you don't necessarily get the one. Um, it won't go all the way through. It yep. won't go all the way through. And so then, some of them are have a really narrow scupper hole, and it's not thick enough to thread it all the way through as well. I've noticed. Okay, that. yeah. So you just got to make sure that you have as much of that cable through, and both of those um, electrodes are are in the water. Submerged. Yep, as if they're so not merged. That, that's not. that's the way I used to do it on one of my old kayaks. The kayaks I've had lately, it it, it didn't work. So I basically just, like I said, I attach it to, I have, uh, you know, one of the uh, beach chair style seats nowadays. So I attach it just to the strap on the side. So mm-hmm. the control's right there. It's easy for me to turn on and off. And then the uh, cable is hanging down in the water. Yep. But well, so many of the kayaks have the, the carry handles. You can, yep. you know, that puts it even deeper down into the water a little bit better. So, yep. uh, and then you don't have that drag. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I'm scrolling through questions because I'm seeing them. Um, you guys 
see any other questions that maybe I missed? I can't see. Uh, like there's one on there right now that's asking if I plan on making a kayak model that will mount to the hull. Oh, kind of. I, I'm guessing they probably mean similar to the uh, surfing one. The <laughs> surfing one. And again, I think the issue yeah. there is we drag our kayaks on the sand so much. Yeah. Yes. That it would destroy it. Yeah, especially um, us up here on the Central Coast, it'd be gone in a couple days. We have nothing but rocky beaches. <laughs> yeah. I see the um, the guy that I was talking about that goes out all night. He's watching, and he said, "That's me." <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's a question that actually came in earlier and or a comment. Um, shark abilities to detect weak electrical field is one of the things that have made them so successful. It's actually really cool that this tech uses that very adaptation. I could show it, but it's going to take up the whole screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, discourage them from hanging around the kayak. I wonder what happened in a full breach. We kind of covered that, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> take a look at at the video, and I, we can show this again if you would like. Um, let's do that. And many times. Yeah, let's show this one more time because it is pretty impressive. Uh, and this is the the shark shield in action on a fa on a shark that is in in full attack mode. Yep. Yeah, so the first couple. The seal decoy again is up at the top of the surface. So I'm going to back cool. it up again because it, sure. it kind of started a little bit late. So there from the beginning. Yep. So that's with the shark shield off. So again, seal decoy at the, the top of the surface. Um, shark shield is a couple meters below it. So it's got to cross through that electric field in order to get to the, the seal decoy. So that was with it off. Here we have another breach with the shark shield off. And now we're going to get into where the shark shield is on. So you can see the shark charging up and then it hits and turns. Um, here we have another one. Obviously, that's better visibility there. There's another approach um, and it again stops it. And then, you know, a fourth one. Yeah. Um, so as I said before, you know, they did this 189 times, approximately half with the shark shield on, half with the shark shield off. And there was 16 of those breaches when the shark shield was off. And there was zero um, when the shark shield was on. So a very marked difference in the shark behavior. Yeah, that's like I said, every time I see that, it, it, it's so impressive. So if anybody ever questions me again, at least I'll know that video exists. Yeah. Where, that video right there is everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we can we can show on it. On our look. website, like we go through all of the scientific research. Um, there's links to the actual papers if anybody is so inclined to read them all. Um, yeah, and, and I mean let's let's talk about the, the research a little bit. This is this is not just stuff you guys have done. It's it's independent, right? Yeah, I mean of course we've done our own research and testing. Um, but you know. Nobody really ever believes that stuff, right? So there's actually now been three independent studies that have been done. Um, the first one was done out of the University of Pretoria, which is in South Africa. Um, so that was done with the very, very earliest versions of the product back in 2002. Um, then they retested it in 2012, and that was done um, by Flinders University in South Australia. Um, and they actually did that testing because there was an instance with a, a university student um, and he was told by his dive master that shark shields don't work and don't use it, leave it in the boat. So he did. And he unfortunately was attacked by great white and died because of the attack. Holy, are you serious? Mm -hmm. So he had a shark shield, left it on the boat and then got attacked. And yes was told by the dive master that it didn't work. Don't bring it in the water. Oh, so my gosh. There was a big, obviously, coronary <laughs> inquest into looking at, because originally they said, oh, he had a shark shield and he died by great white. And then they found out what actually happened. Um, so they wanted to look into whether or not shark shield actually worked because, you know, there hadn't been any recent testing done and the one was done in South Africa. So that's where they did the testing. So they did some with static baits in, um, in South Australia. And then they did that seal decoy test in South Africa. Um, and then when we had all those fatal attacks in Western Australia, um, the Western Australian government gave the university of Western Australia some funding to test 
um, current shark deterrent technology, which is part of what Shark Shield was. And then they also tested um, like a couple other products that were in the marketplace. And then they tested new and novel deterrent technology. So they were looking at orca sounds, um, bubble curtains, um, strobe lights. And out of that, they came out and said Shark Shield was the only product that had any effect on the sharks at all. Um, and because of that, the Western Australian government has actually instituted a rebate um, on our dive product. So anyway, that buys one, they get a $200 rebate. So a subsidy. Are you mm -mm, nope. So we're the only product that has that. Um, and they've just finished up testing for the surfboard product. And we're hoping that that will be approved soon. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, again, for whatever reason, the whole question thing is locked up on, on that end. But um, Dusty McAdden says he's had one for three years and it's still working great. He loves it. Um, we're only two shares away. Um, thankfully, um, Sierra in our office is monitoring things. Thank you, Sierra. Okay. <laughs> um, she says we're only two shares away. So we're at 98 wow. shares. Um, so that's, that's awesome. Thank you everybody so much for doing that. A big thumbs up to you uh, and everyone for sharing. This is, uh, what we need. Edgar says he needs one for fishing La Jolla. Yeah. I mean, like I said, when we get those hammerheads around out there and there are white sharks out there and plenty of other types of sharks, uh, Makos and such, um, you know, like I said, help you, help you from, save you from losing your, your big old yellowtail or white sea bass. That's, yep. that's, a, that's huge. And if somebody um, is interested in buying one, um, we have a store like locator on the website. Um, you know, obviously you can purchase from sharkshield.com or oceanguardian.com. It goes to the same website. Um, and then at the bottom, there's a, a store locator and you can just put in your zip code and they'll tell you the nearest stock is to you. Mark Benward says impressive. <laughs> They are impressive, and I and like I said, I'm 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 glad I was able to uh, bring up that video uh, yeah. to really show that. That that's like I said. Now I know where that's to direct very anybody. Very compelling. Yeah, Ryan. Um, like I said, you're up in Central Coast, right? Yes. Um, white shark heaven. Um, <laughs> are, are a lot of are a lot of guys using the shark shield up there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think in the last couple of years, they're getting way a lot more popular. Guys are starting to realize that. Can you hear him? His image looks frozen to me. I can still hear him. Oh, okay. guess you hear me. All right. Um, yeah, so a lot of guys are using them now compared to, I think, before. Um, definitely. I know a lot of the guys I fish with uh, pretty much after I got <laughs> attacked. Uh, a lot of guys went out and bought them just because it's something that hit close to home and it's, it's happening on a regular basis up here. There's at least two or three a year. And, you know, no one yeah, with mean, them is getting hit yet. So it's kind of, there, there have been, there's been a few up there, right? I mean, I yeah, mean, I don't know the numbers that my, my buddy Paul was keeping track of it, but um, I don't remember exact numbers, but there's been a few hits on kayaks. Yeah, there's been, I mean, I would say, I don't remember. There hasn't been any yet this year, but our season just started last week, but Last year, I think there was one, and then the year before that, there was a couple, too. So, I mean, it's it's definitely happens on a regular basis, and it's just one of those things. It's kind of a peace of mind, I think, to have that thing and, you know, the science behind it and stuff like that. It, it definitely works, so why not invest in it for your safety and for your family's safety and stuff like that? Well, yeah. I mean, and even if you if you got tagged, um, and it, I think that's my biggest thing. So, when I got hit, I, didn't, I mean, it literally – grabbed the kayak and then started pushing me again. So if I would have had that, maybe it would have just hit the initial breach. As I say, it doesn't deter it um, because it's such a large shark or something like that. And it gets through that initial uh, shock and it doesn't for some reason back off. At least it probably wouldn't have done the second one. If I would have landed on the other side of my kayak, <laughs> I would have been between my kayak and a 20 foot shark. So <laughs> instead right. of the, Yeah. And that's what I was kind of thinking. He's like, even if you were like me who tends to only turn it on, when I have a fish, right. If, if I did go in the water, at least I could then turn it on and is less likely because that's so the bad. thing is, is what I've seen is some of these, they get the, the first hit and you're thinking, yeah. Oh, well he's going to realize it's plastic and not come back. Yeah. Well, but they huh. come back. Right. And like the day I got hit, I mean, there was a guy that got hit a half hour before me and he had hit plastic. So obviously they're not, <laughs> they're intelligent creatures, but, uh, he didn't care it was plastic. He came back for another piece of plastic. So 
Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, it's um They're like a fish. They eat plastics. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you need to put a big old treble hook on the back of the kayak. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, there was one where somebody said that he actually bit the end of the kayak and was kind of shaking it. And yeah, the the guy that today I got hit, he bit the the nose of it and just kind of took it and then flipped the, the boat and then let go. So he saw it, it circled him, which I'm sure that did, for his it for sure probably wouldn't have come up. I mean, it circled him and then bit him. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I you're, a, you're a braver man than me because I think if one other guy got hit, I may have paddled in that day. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely won't be staying out if it ever happens again. If someone gets hit, I'm just, they're still in the area. Let's just leave. <laughs> so, so um, Mike Sawyer says he turned in a little late. Did we speak of the battery life? Yeah. What, what were you saying? It was like six? Six hours. Yep. And we've recently upgraded the battery. So the overall lifetime of the battery, it used to be 300 charge and discharge cycles. And now it's a thousand. So on the 300, most people, it would last them five to six years. So I'm expecting, you know, battery should be 10 plus years on this new one. Yeah. And, and uh, battery technology has come such a long way, mm-hmm. you know, smaller and lighter and more powerful. Yep. Um, it's a lithium ion, I take it. It is. Yes. What is it? Uh, six volt. How many amps? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't worry about that stuff. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It works. <laughs> That's for the engineers to worry about. So Sierra just posted and we are at 100 shares and we'll be announcing the giveaway after we wrap up the broadcast. Uh, thanks again, Sierra, for, for keeping an eye on the questions for me. Um, I'll be talking to our BeLive uh, software company today and figure out why I'm not getting these questions on the actual BeLive uh, well, studio. And- Ryan is totally frozen to me. I can't hear or see anything on him. So when he was talking, I hope there was no questions for me because I. Couldn't. Oh no! I, yeah, I can. Yeah. I can see and hear him. So um, Weird. sometimes it's a matter of people having, you know, us having to refresh. So if you just okay. refresh the page, you can do that. Um, is he still frozen on you? Yeah, I'll try to refresh it. Yeah, just refresh your page. You'll drop out for a second, and then I'll pull you back up. Um, Ryan, what do you got going on, man? You got a, a tournament or something coming up or? Yeah. So, uh, I run, uh, the central coast slam down. It's every September. Um, it's just a local tournament we have here on the central coast. And, uh, usually it's between 70 and 150 anglers, uh, participate and it's just fishing for rockfish, uh, here on the central coast, rockfish and lingcod. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of participation do you get in that? What was that? Do you get good participation? Uh, usually between 70 and 150 people. So that's, that's good. Yeah, it's been kind of goes. Some years are good. Some years are not. It depends if there's other tournaments the same weekend. So, right. Right. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's what predominantly what you're doing up there. Uh, shallow water rockfish, lingcod. Yeah, mainly shallow water rockfish, uh, lingcod and stuff like that. So just in shallow. Stuff like that. Uh, we don't, we get, I think it's just guys not targeting them. Um, the guys get the random halibut, like a guy on opener got a 25 pounder out of Leffingwell landing one of our spots. Um, but he was rock fishing as well and just dropped it on its head and got it. So I think it's just guys not targeting him specifically up, uh, towards us. So more into, but, more into the Lincoln and Cabazon and yeah, it's, it's hard to sit there and bounce ball or something like that when you're pulling up a uh, rock fish after rock fish, when you're, even when you're going through the, off the edge of the reefs and stuff. So, right. So if somebody wants to, is interested in the tournament, where do they? Um, CCKF.net and the registration will probably be out about May. Usually I open it up. So, and uh, oh, cool. start advertising for it and stuff like that. Cool, man. Well, Ryan, I appreciate you being on here. I'm going to sign you out of there. Um, right. Thanks for sharing your stories and good luck with the tournament. And uh, right. good luck with that shark shield, keeping those uh, toothy critters off your boat from now on, man. I, I would right. hate to hear about that happening. That, that would I mean, I gotta admit, man, that would that would scare the bejesus out of me. Yeah, it definitely. Like I said, I mean, every time I get on the water, I get that second of anxiety um, for the first like five minutes, but it usually goes away and I'm able to enjoy my day. But definitely there. And uh, thank you guys for inviting me. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, and uh, <laughs> take care, we'll man. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye. 
So Amanda, uh, again, I, I want to thank you so much for, for this and, and offering uh, up a Freedom 7 to one of our, our viewers. Um, I'll have them uh, contact you after after we yep. pick someone. I'll have them reach out to you and how we get it. Um, if somebody wants more information on Ocean Guardian, Shark Shield, um, how are they going to find it? They um, best places just go to the website. I mean, there's tons of um, testimonials. There's all the science, huge amount of video. So sharkshield.com or Ocean Guardian is ocean-guardian.com. If someone was interested in purchasing one, um, I, I know you said you had a, a shop finder. Are they generally found in dive shops or do you have them in kayak shops or a little bit of everything? No, or? No, there's a few kayak shops. It's mainly in dive shops and a few surf shops. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah because you also have, again, if people are surfers and are interested in that, um, I mean, you got Tom Carroll. I mean, that's a big name in surfing behind this product. And um, so he's obviously a believer. And uh, yep. that's certainly something people would want to look at. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Amanda, so much. I appreciate you, it once again. And uh, if anybody has any more questions, we'll just keep following up on this thread. And yep, just we'll tag me and I can hop on and answer too. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Bye. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody. Um, once again, I really appreciate you joining here on the uh, Kayak Fishing Show Live, brought to you by Ballast Point. This one's a long fin logger. Um, you know, they've been a longtime supporter of the show, and it's also my favorite beer. I uh, can't thank those guys enough for, for uh, joining the show today. Uh, if you, again, want more information on the Shark Shield, look them up. If you have any questions, post them on up here. Um, again, we had over a hundred, um, shares, so we will be, uh, doing the drawing a little bit later. I'll, I'll set up a randomizer and we'll just pick from somebody who commented was part of the show. Um, join us, uh, next week. We actually will have the guys from Anaqua batteries are going to be joining the show and we'll be giving away some of their gear. We're going to be talking about all their different products they are coming up and they've got a lot of new stuff coming out. And so I'm looking forward to that. So again, pretty much trying to do this every Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks everybody for joining me once again. And as always, if you're going out on the water, please always wear your PFD and keep your paddle right side up. Take care. Well, I hope you see what a great product that Shark Shield is and why I use it when I go out on the water. Um, if you want to see these live videos and have a chance at winning some of the prizes that we're giving away, make sure you join us over on Facebook for the on the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Salmon's page where we're doing these weekly live shows. Um, if you subscribe to the videos, you will be notified anytime we're going live. So if you want to see what we're doing and have a chance to win some cool prizes from our sponsors, make sure you go over there to the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Salmon's Facebook page. I hope to see you over there. Take care.